What's that? Oh, I'm just working on a theory. What theory? Well, I was gonna maybe do an Amanda the Poppy Playtime. Yeah, Poppy Playtime theory. What what theory specifically? Um, well, I've still got that theory about how, you know, we were just high on gas the entire time and none of it's real. No? Oh, you're, you're the star of the show. I know, I, dude, I keep telling people. I keep telling them. I keep saying, listen, Huggy's the star of the show. You know, he's the main attraction. Wait, Catnap? No, no one even likes Catnap. Catnap is, Catnap is, um, he's boring. I mean, <laughs> Cat makes me want to nap, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I keep telling him you're going to come back and I'm, I'm sure it'll be chapter four. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, we'll come back. It's going to be big. It's going to be, everyone's going to clap. Yeah, everyone's going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to get back on with my, my theory now. Okay. What's that? Um, it's just nothing. It's just some music I'm listening to. No, no, no. Don't, don't come over here. Don't come over here. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Wait, where's he gone? Huggy? Huggy? Oh, shh. Hello, theorists, and welcome to another Terrico Theory. Today, we're taking a look at the brand new demo for Amanda the Adventurer 2, the sequel to the game that taught us exactly why DVDs were invented. You never see haunted Blu-rays now, do you? This might only be a short tease of what's to come, but it does seem like a perfect time for me to talk about an unreleased theory that I've had since the first game. So switch on your CRT, rewind your VHS tapes, and brush up on your third grade education, because it's time to learn why you are the villain in Amanda the Adventurer. Last year, we were introduced to Amanda in the first game to release on Steam. This wasn't actually her first appearance, though. She first appeared in a game on itch.io, and both games center around the same theme, creepy VHS tapes of warped childhood cartoon characters. Amanda the Adventurer is loosely based on Dora the Explorer, except whereas Dora is cute, educational, and child-friendly, Amanda is, well, not so much. This twisted and darker version of Dora might seem like she has the same childlike innocence, but we very quickly learned that there was an evil lurking in those VHS tapes. In Amanda the Adventurer, we played as Riley Park. Riley's Aunt Kate had mysteriously vanished, leaving her house and belongings to Riley in her will. Honestly, in this economy, that is the dream. But this house wasn't a gift. Once inside, Riley finds instructions from her missing aunt to search the attic, find a VHS tape, and watch it. A bit of a weird proposition if you ask me. I'm sorry, but I've just watched far too many horror films to trust a creepy VHS tape in an attic. Sure enough, Riley enters the attic and immediately finds the VHS tape that Aunt Kate was referring to, a copy of the children's show Amanda the Adventurer. Now immediately something is off about the whole situation. Of course, creepy VHS tape in the attic, sure, but this VHS tape is very different. Yes, it contains an episode of the show, but Riley can also interact with it directly. Amanda asks her questions and Riley gets a chance to respond. Not only that, but Amanda and her trusty sidekick, Willie the Sheep, respond to her answers directly too. This is our very first hint that something is off with these tapes. Amanda seems innocent enough, she seems like she just wants to play along with us, but strangely enough, she seems to be alive. What should be a pre-recorded episode becomes a live interaction between Riley and Amanda. But if that wasn't odd enough, the tapes can actually affect the attic around Riley as well. Several times, the VHS tapes cause the attic to change. Things move, they change from real to fake, and objects are brought in for Riley to interact with. But to make things one step more messed up, Riley's interactions can even change those VHS tapes. At one point, after acquiring the pause button, Riley turns up the toy oven in the attic, which causes the episode to change completely, setting the kitchen on fire. Again, this is our first major clue that not only are Amanda and Wooly sentient, but the VHS tapes in the attic are linked in some way. Put a pin in that, because this is a key point to my theory. Now, it's at this point that Riley should have probably left the attic, burnt the VHS tape, and sold that house at a very undervalued rate, as is the plot of most haunted house horror movies. But Riley continues. She wants to find out what happened to her aunt. She's still missing, and this is the biggest lead that she has. So, she continues to watch the tapes, each one offering new puzzles to solve, each one offering small clues for her, and each one showing a little more that Amanda is not as innocent as she seems. 
As usual in these types of games, as Riley gets closer to the truth, she also begins to find more secrets and mysteries. As you progress through the game, Woolly begins to give you small hints that something isn't right. He is set up as Amanda's sidekick and he accompanies her throughout her adventures, but as time passes, he tries to warn us about Amanda. Before he can explain anything though, Amanda silences him. At first she injures him, a threat, but later she takes away his voice completely, and finally she appears to attempt to kill him. This even removes him from the title screen, implying that Amanda deleted him from the show entirely. This is our first major hint that not only is Amanda sentient, but she's also hiding a dark secret. A secret so terrible that she's willing to kill poor Wooly to stop him from telling us. But it wasn't too long before we learned what this secret was. The game had several different endings, but the first one you are likely to encounter is the monster ending. After annoying Amanda or refusing to cooperate with her, eventually the hatch door to the attic flings open. Suddenly, a long-limbed creature with just a few too many eyes breaks in, glances at Riley, and then kills her. This creature is obviously tied to Amanda in some way. Its ears look very similar to Amanda's hair, and both are shown to have these many eyes. But this just raises the first big question. How is Amanda in the TV, and also a giant creature in our world like this? This mystery only deepens with the true endings. If you make it to the true end of the game, Amanda offers to tell you her big secret. Now she really makes sure you want to know, making you repeat yes several times before she will tell you. If you go through with it, she tells you that she's out there, somewhere. Then the TV suddenly comes to life with what looks like somebody trying to break out. Luckily, Riley uses a nearby brick to destroy the TV before that can happen. And if you have unlocked all of the game's secret tapes, a mysterious character appears behind her before the game cuts to credits. Now on the face of it, this seems pretty simple. The VHS tapes are cursed by this living Amanda character. She's trying to escape the VHS tapes into our world, something she seemed very close to achieving. But we had so many questions. Who exactly is Amanda? Why are these tapes cursed like this? Why is this creature here if Amanda is trying to escape? And where is Aunt Kate? But most of all, why did we have to kill poor Blabbot? The first game actually gives us a lot of information towards all of these mysteries. Many of these were hinted at in the secret tapes and some, well, I had to do a little bit of digging for. The most obvious one to solve here is where is Aunt Kate? At several times throughout the game, we learn that people in this town are going missing. Not in the usual way though, these people are never found again, no trace left behind, often with no explanation for how they just suddenly disappeared. One of the creepiest secret tapes in the game strongly implies the answer. We get a VHS tape depicting a young child's birthday. This young girl is Lauren and her parents talk about how she is so obsessed with this show, so much so that she won't even stop watching for her own birthday party. Her father tries to get her attention by telling her she's missing her cake and ice cream. And of course, they got her favorite flavor, mint chocolate chip. See, now you know this child is messed up. Whose favorite flavor is mint chocolate chip? But after only leaving for a few moments, when her parents return to the room, Lauren has vanished. Her parents assume she left the house, perhaps she was even taken, but in their panic, they miss a crucial detail. In the background, you can now hear Amanda talking about how much she loves mint chocolate chip. Now, of course, this is pretty obvious. Lauren being so entranced by the TV was something supernatural. She didn't just vanish, she was taken. She was taken by the TV show she was so obsessed by. You could even say she was absorbed by it. This explains all the disappearances around the town. This, in fact, was what Aunt Kate was investigating. To further cement this idea, Amanda does respond to the words Kate and Lauren in the VHS tapes. She talks about them being her friends and she even wants to send cookies to Kate. So these cursed VHS tapes are abducting people, trapping them inside the show to be Amanda's playthings. Makes sense, although it doesn't bode well considering we see how many dead characters are in this scene. But that still doesn't explain Amanda or how all of this began, except the game gives us those answers too. With the help of the other secret tapes, as well as some of the files lying around the attic, we learn that Amanda the Adventurer was created by a man named Sam Colton, with the help and inspiration of his adopted daughter, Rebecca Colton. As the show became more popular, a company named Hamlin Entertainment bought the rights to it. Production of the show moved into their studio, and there were even plans to expand it into a full cartoon. But before that could happen, Sam himself eventually went missing. Now, of course, by now we can guess he was also taken by the show. This is pretty much confirmed later when Amanda talks about the daddy chicken and asks you to tell her his name. Look at the chickens. Do you know what the daddy is called? 
Wait, what did you say? How do you- But one of the secret tapes gives us a deeper insight into this. In this tape, we see a secret recording of Hamlin working with Rebecca to create the show, but something about it seems really creepy. Rebecca, that was great. Let's move on to the next one. Bye, What is this? What is she reading? Just a few simple words. Uh, this script is specifically tuned to train the technology's dynamic voice reaction. The what? I want this to stop. <sighs> Sam, why don't you take a walk for a few minutes? We've only got a few more of these. No, than I that. don't want to do that. Rebecca, what's wrong? Who are you talking to? The man in the headphones. This new man, she's upset. This is going too far. Let's just take five. Rebecca, come on out and we'll... In the recording studio, they ask her to repeat these words. By yell, pie man, and ba lamb. Now at first, these just seem like random phrases that might be used throughout the show, and this of course is their explanation for this. But one of the biggest theories of the game so far is that they are actually correlated to demons. Bael sounds like Bael, Pai Man, Pai Mon, and Balam Balam. All three of these are demons in the Ars Goetia, part of the Lesiki of Solomon, a very real and very old book that describes demons. What makes this even creepier is that Rebecca begins to argue with someone she calls the man in the headphones. This man is trying to get her to do something that she doesn't want to do, but of course, no one else can hear him. So this could explain everything. These VHS tapes aren't just cursed, they contain a demon. A demon summoned by Rebecca for Hamlin. Now this is where the theory gets really interesting. Demons in most popular culture exist to tempt or corrupt mortals. They often do this by tormenting us, or more commonly, offering us deals. This is where the phrase, a deal with the devil, comes from. Often demons are given power by the mortals that call upon them, those who summon them, those who worship them, and those who do their bidding. I think it's very likely that someone at Hamelin used Rebecca to summon one such demon. Why exactly they wanted to do this is unknown, but my money is on… well, money. I theorise that Hamelin made a deal with a devil to make sure that their show was as popular as it could be. They wanted it to be engaging, they wanted children to be glued to their screens. Of these three demons though, I think we even have one that is the most likely, Paimon. The very first VHS tape we watch talks about Pi, perhaps a cheeky little hint, but Paimon actually fits very well in the game series. He's described as being a king of hell, and he's known in mythology to teach science and answer questions for those that summon him. Paimon is a keeper of secrets. He has a knowledge of the earth, its waters and winds, something we see hinted at in this puzzle. When he appears, it's usually preceded by men playing music, something each episode of Amanda the Adventurer begins with. The entire game centres around Riley trying to access hidden knowledge, and it ends with Amanda, or perhaps Paimon, offering to divulge a secret to us. Remember, I said earlier that she asks us three times to confirm that we want to learn this secret. That almost feels like a pact with a devil to me. But Paimon is also described as having two kings that serve under him, Labal and Abalam. This is something that I think the demo for Amanda 2 might just have confirmed. In the first game, the creature that attacks us is this tall, slender monster with just a few too many eyes. But look at its skin. It appears as a very pale, almost white. In the Chapter 2 demo, a very similar creature stalks us throughout the entire game. You can often hear it banging around in the air vents above us. But once it finally reveals itself to offer the VHS tape to us, take a look at its skin. These seem like two different creatures. Two different creatures that seem to help Amanda, or again, Paimon. Paimon is also sometimes known as a magician. He has the ability to make things appear, something we see happen many times throughout our time in the attic. But one thing that is also commonly mentioned about Paimon is that if he appears alone, a sacrifice must be made to him. This is actually a key thread in my theory. During our time in the first game, we actually make several such sacrifices. In order to complete the puzzles and progress towards that hidden knowledge, we choose to kill several creatures. First, this rat to make a meat. 
Pi, maybe another hint. Second, we sacrifice this doll that makes the sound of a real girl when we cut it. And third, we sacrifice Blabbot, our helpful little friend in the attic. Finally, in order to unlock all the true endings, we have to sacrifice Wooly. Remember, at no time were we forced to do any of this. We chose to do it in order to gain the knowledge that we sought. Just like at that final test, we chose to accept Amanda's bargain, no matter the cost. I believe the entire first game is the demon Paimon trying to tempt us. With each sacrifice we make, Paimon grows in power, and by the end, he's strong enough to break out of the TV. By destroying the television, we manage to stop that from happening for now. This is why the attic shifts and changes. Paimon is playing with us, trying to get us to play his games. The tapes contain the demon Paimon, but as long as they exist, they anchor him to our world. Imagine the tapes as a foot in the door to hell. As long as the tapes exist, the door remains ajar, but Paimon needs people to sacrifice to him to gain enough power to open the door fully. But there is still more to this theory. Rebecca may have summoned Paimon, but she hasn't been taken by the TV show. After Sam's disappearance, Rebecca can be seen signing a contract with Hamlet, and if Sam had disappeared already, we can assume that the sentient Amanda had already been created. But I have answers for all of this too. Look at how Rebecca acts in this scene. She seems despondent, uncaring. It's very different to the smiling girl, the light of Sam's life as we know her to be. Of course, perhaps she's just sad that her adoptive father is missing, but I think there is more to it. On this newspaper article, we get a line that describes Amanda the Adventurer as having soul. I think this is a huge hint that Hamlin offered Rebecca's soul to Paimon in exchange for the success of the show, The First Sacrifice. This is why Amanda appears sentient in the show. Rebecca's soul is trapped here. This also explains why she often appears to be suffering. Just like everyone else, the soul of Rebecca is being tormented, trapped within his own realm. Amanda also talks about the Meat Man, someone she seems to be incredibly afraid of. This is another theme that the game often brings up, the theme of meat. One ending shows us being transported into the butcher shop and hung like meat, a place that Amanda was terrified of. I believe this is referencing what Paimon does to the souls that end up trapped in his realm. He feasts on them. To him, humans are nothing more than cattle, just sacks of meat for him to consume. This is why the show often shows us meat. It's Paimon talking down to us, once again, tormenting us. This could all explain why Amanda has such a split personality, why she seems so innocent sometimes and so evil at others. Her soul is being tormented and possibly even possessed by Paimon, all in front of our eyes, like a beast playing with its food. In fact, this paints a terrible picture of the fate of the other souls trapped in the show. The reason why they are depicted as animals in the show is because Paimon treats them like meat. The reason Amanda can't visit Kate anymore is because Paimon has already eaten her soul. But if this wasn't all bad enough, there is still more to come. I talked earlier about Hamlin Entertainment and how they seem to have wanted to summon a demon, but there are some even deeper mysteries with this company. Hamlin Entertainment is named after the German town of Hamlin, notice the spelling here. This town is notable for being the origin of the story of the Pied Piper. This story tells us of Hamlin's famous infestation of rats. In 1284, Hamlin was so infested by rats until the Pied Piper offered to solve this problem. The mayor, so desperate to be rid of them, offered him 1,000 guilders or gold coins to do the job. The piper accepted and using his pipe, played music to lure all the rats into a local river, drowning them. But after the job was done, the mayor didn't keep his promise and only offered to pay 50 guilders, even going so far as to accuse the piper of bringing the rats to the town in the first place. The piper was so angry that he vowed to get revenge. One day, when the adults of the town were all in church, the piper returned, although this time he lured all the children away instead. This story has many different versions, but they all end in similar ways. The children either drowned, were sealed in a cave, or in nicer versions, they were taken to another land. Either way, none of those children were ever seen again. The comparisons with Amanda the Adventurer are clear. A man, or demon, playing music lures children away, never to be seen again. The logo of Hamlin Entertainment is even a mouse, or perhaps a rat, and the first sacrifice we make in the game is also a rat. But this just makes me wonder, was Hamlin named like this as a pure coincidence, or was all of this planned from the beginning? 
In fact, going one step further, I now wonder if the Pied Piper of Hamelin was Paimon all along. Pied Piper, Paimon. This demon seems to have been kidnapping children for a very long time. I think we should keep a close eye on Hamelin. They clearly knew what they were doing when they struck a bargain with Paimon, and I think it's entirely possible that the company is more of a cult than a production studio. But this just gives me one question. If Paimon is kidnapping children, does that mean that Hamlin also made a bargain with Paimon and also failed to deliver on their promises? Perhaps the events of the game are all part of that broken bargain, and perhaps this is just a repeat of the Pied Piper. In fact, now that I think about it, Sam disappearing was entirely too convenient for Hamlin. With him gone, they had complete control over the show, and of course, Rebecca. But speaking of Rebecca, the grand reveal at the end of the game is that Amanda says, I am out there, somewhere. I believe this is Amanda telling us that her soul is aware that her body is still intact, something I think Kate had stumbled upon. Kate had all the evidence that we did, meaning she likely figured all of this out just like we have. She also seemed to moonlight as a supernatural detective, which leads me to believe that she knew what Hamlin was up to. Now we just need to figure out if it was Paimon or Hamlin that got to her. I do think we're going to learn more about Kate's history though. The demo for the second game is set in a library and Kate herself was a librarian. This tape is likely one of hers, so I think it's safe to say that this is the library that Kate worked in. But as I said at the beginning of this theory, I propose the idea that we, the player, are the villains. If everything I have theorized is true, then by watching these tapes, by playing these games, we are empowering the demon Paimon. Riley could have walked away at any point. We could have burnt the VHS tapes and rid the world of Paimon's influence. But she didn't. She kept on going. She carried on even when she knew those tapes contained evil. She carried on even when she saw Amanda attack Wooly, and she carried on and performed every single sacrifice asked of her. Now, of course, she's doing this to learn about Aunt Kate, but this just shows the weakness of humanity. She was tempted by knowledge, and she struck a bargain with a demon to get it. But we the players are no better. We play through this game to learn those same secrets. We replay over and over to unlock the secret tapes. We make Wooly and Amanda go through torture again and again so we can figure out the mystery. No, when I say you are the villain, I mean you. You and I. We are keeping the demon alive just as much as Riley is. We are responsible all because we feel like we need to know what happened. But you know what they say, curiosity killed the cats, or should that be, curiosity killed the Kate? There are of course still questions. I personally want to know why Kate seems so intent on spreading the show. She's been described several times as one of the show's biggest supporters, which if she knew about the show's secret, this could be a big twist. But even if this was before she knew, she kept a copy of the VHS in the library. She promoted it, so in some way, she probably feels guilty for the disappearances. Furthermore, why does she endanger Riley with this secret too? Was she hoping to be saved or was there more to it? I obviously want to find out what happened to Wooly, he's missing, but Amanda tells us in the demo that we need to find him, so I wouldn't count him out just yet. Either way, I cannot wait to go digging for more clues in the second game, so I hope you'll join me this autumn or this fall for the next adventure with Amanda. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. This is my channel now. Don't subscribe to Terrago. Unsubscribe. Download the video. You can't stop me. I'm unstoppable. Ah!